John 12, this is going to really be a blessing. Check your text. I sent you a song. John 12 says this, verse number 12. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd, a large crowd of Passover visitors. Let me stop and say that this is Passover week. When Passover week is the week before resurrection, on Passover, they would give a sacrificial offering. So we're not off target. If you study Passover, Passover, they would go to the temple to bring an offering on the Passover. So we're not off target. So now here it is. John 12 says, praise God, blessing. Um, th so they took a large crowd of Passover visitors, took palm branches, and went down the road to meet him. They were shouting to Jesus, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that he said, don't be afraid of the people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming riding on a donkey cult. That was prophesied, Zechariah 9, 9. This is the important thing of scripture. Scripture has over 2,000 prophecies that have been fulfilled. You gotta tell me, how can a book be man-written and be filled with things that were to come without them being there? Now, if you follow the Quran, the Quran's gotta be able to match the same amount of prophecies as scripture, if it's divinely written. So here it is, it says this, it says, um, Jesus found a young donkey, rode it. Verse 16, his disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy, but after Jesus entered into glory, they remembered what happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. This was the reason so many people went out to meet him, so because they heard the miraculous signs. Then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. This is so powerful. The, the, the community of faith at the time went out to see Jesus, and they begin to throw palm branches down, symbolizing his kingship, his lordship. Give me 15 minutes on the clock and I'll be out. So they wanted to symbolize his lordship, his authority, his deity. And, and this is why they were throwing palm branches down, because they thought that this was a king coming. They didn't see that he's about to be crucified. They saw that he is about to show everybody his power, his might, his authority. So in their mind, they're thinking, oh, Jesus is going to show out and he's going to show everybody that he is the Lord. Their expectation of him was that he is going to raise himself up and put them in kingly places. And these are very important aspects aspects of scripture because they highlight to you and I where many of us may be missing it. They thought for sure this Jesus that I'm getting up every Sunday to go worship at TKC is going to teach me things that I've never known before. He's going to open doors that I've never dreamed of. He's going to do some things that blow my mind. He's going to be the one that lifts my head above my enemies. He's going to be the one that prepares a table before me in the presence of all my enemies. He's going to anoint my head with oil. They wanted this Jesus that was going to be a helping Jesus. He was going to be a Jesus that had all of this authority. He was going to be this Jesus that had all of this power. But here's the problem. They, wanting a, they wanted a helping Savior, but got a hanging Savior instead. What do you do when the Jesus you wanted to help you just hangs there? Because the, the, the problem that was happening was that they had this idea of who he was going to be and what he was going to do. And instead of him doing what they thought he was going to do, he didn't help them. He just hung there. Can I get in your business and ask you, how many of you have had this high expectation 
of what Jesus was supposed to help you out of but let you hang in. Ooh, church. They cheered for Jesus. They praised Jesus. They shouted for Jesus. They said, hallelujah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It is easy to praise the Jesus that fits the version of your expectation. It is easy to praise the Jesus that matches what you think he should be. It is easy to celebrate the God that you think is about to do what you think he's about to do in your life. But the question that needs to be asked to this 21st century modern day cancel culture Christian is can you serve a God that doesn't meet your expectation? Can you serve a God that doesn't do what you wanted him to do in the time that you wanted him to do it? They cheered for the version of Jesus that fit their present circumstance. We all have that Jesus. In our mind, we're sitting here thinking right now, if I give this big gift, this is what God is going to do for me. I got this in my heart that I wanted him to do. Now, my question to you is, if God doesn't do any of that, will you still cheer? Will you still show up? Or will you start backsliding because he didn't meet the version of Jesus that you wanted? Because let me tell you something. A lot of you got these high expectations for Jesus, and you should. A lot of you got these big dreams for Jesus, and you should. A lot of you got these big ideas for Jesus, and you should. My only question is, is maybe you should write your future plans in pencil as opposed to pen. Because then you give Jesus the opportunity to edit what you wanted to be permanent. What do you do when God doesn't do what you put in ink, but he does it in pencil? I want to know, will you have the same level of joy? Will you have the same level of peace? And will you be able to say, Hosanna, when God doesn't meet the version that you wanted in your mind? I know you thought that you'd be married at 35. I know you thought that you'd have children. I know you thought you'd be living in behind the white picket fence. But what what if God doesn't answer the prayer in the way you want it? What if he doesn't answer it in the time that you want it? Can you still be joyful? Can you still be rejoicing? And they thought, point number three, that the king was coming to give them crowns. But the king didn't come to give them a crown. He came to give them a cross. And can you handle a relationship with God that doesn't give you crowns but gives you crosses? What I'm talking about is what you want it to happen, doesn't happen. You wanted to get the job, someone less qualified than you gets it, and you got to sit there and celebrate them knowing they don't deserve the job. What I'm talking about is a cross instead of a crown, is that you end up doing all of that you're doing for people, and instead of them going online and celebrating you, they only tell half of the story. They crucify you and don't tell you the truth, and they make you look like a dirty dog. I am asking you, can you still serve a God that even though he told you to write the song, you spent $4,000 making the song and nobody even bought it but you obeyed God. I'm asking you, can you honor God if God tells you to do something and you don't get the result? Oh, you that are married, you thought it was going to be beautiful and singing roses every day. You thought y'all were going to make love every second of the day. You thought every day they woke up, we're going to be holding hands and then all of a sudden you started getting into turbulence. Can you still worship God when the honey ain't right and the money acting funny? I want to know, is your relationship with God contingent upon him being the version that you want him to be to help your story? Yeah. I, I'm just asking you a question. Can you hang in there when the version of the God that you want doesn't match your story? I go deeper. <laughs> this is the one that's going to mess you up. When Jesus was being crucified, he taught us how to hang in there. Because some things you want won't change on this side. No, until you get that, your faith won't grow. From pastor to people. There's no special Jesus anointing pastors have that people don't have. 
we got to eat this same medicine too. We, we got to live this same medicine too. That there are some things that God is not going to change on this side and not going to give you the answer on on this side. And you got to hang on that cross until your life expires and you get your answer on the other side. Can you still serve them with questions? Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I know, church. I, I, this thing hit my soul. Can you worship God with questions? I know you're the generation that needs to know everything. Where we're going to eat, what's the restaurant, what's on the menu, but can you still worship God when you're saying to somebody, I don't know what's on the menu, I don't know what I'm going to eat, but I trust that if he allowed it, he knows more than what, I know you can't handle that because we want a religion that, ate, that makes us be able to control the deity that makes us be able to say deity do this and he does it do this and he does that but what if God doesn't give you an answer to the why can you still be able to say God it hurts God I don't understand God I don't know why this is happening I didn't expect this to be my life but I'm going to tell you God that I'm going to trust you even if I gotta hang in there and get my answer on the other side I'm trying to help your faith. If you get anything from my years of preaching, you need to get this. There are some answers you're just not going to get on this side. There are some conclusions you're not going to be able to get. And if your faith is built on you knowing everything, walk away. Because there are some things you're just not going to understand. There are some things you're not going to be in support of. There are some things you didn't vote for. There are some things you weren't at the table on. But your answer got to be, I don't know. Oh, now no don't act fake don't act like it don't hurt because that hurts your faith you got to be honest and say God I don't understand I don't know why you're doing this I don't even agree with it but I'm going to trust that there are some things that I just got to learn how to hang in there and on the other side I will get my answer sooner or later by and by I will understand I know that doesn't make sense it's not popular preaching because you want to know why your child is sick. You want to know why it didn't work out. You want to know how come it's not happening fast enough. Why am I not going further than what I thought I should be? But there are seasons where we just got to learn how to be like Jesus and hang him there. There are seasons where people will say, why don't you get off your cross and show us who you are and you got to learn how to hang him there. If you don't learn how to hang, you're going to walk off your cross and there are some things you will not understand on this side you're not gonna get it on this side I know I'm like you I want the answer I want to know God why I want to know God why won't you do this I want to know why does bad things happen to good people I want to know that why does this person have to deal with that why can't that person deal with that why is there racism why is there people that are losing their life why did they die at 27 their future was ahead of them their destiny was ahead of them there are some questions that we will have as creatures that we got to be honest and say I have questions but I got to trust God and I got to hang in there it's not cliche because if you don't get this in your soul you'll be mad at God you'll be angry at God you'll be frustrated at God and it ain't gonna change God's position it ain't gonna change the fact that he's God it's not gonna make him change what he's doing it's like your kids being mad at you they can be mad at you all they want you're gonna say they're gonna have to learn how to get over it why because I am the parent No, there's no voting. Can you, here's the next one. Can you agree to a life that God wants for you and it not be a life you wanted for yourself? Can you agree 
to a life that God wants for you and a life not that you want for yourself. Maybe you're doing something now and you don't even like it, but you know you're called to it. Maybe you're doing something now, you don't love it, but you're called to it. Maybe you don't want to do it, but you're called to it. Not everything God asks you to do, you're going to approve of, you're going to love, you're going to support, you're going to endorse. Some things you're doing as a sacrifice. Hear the word, sacrifice. It's a word that we don't like to use. It's a word that we don't use anymore. It's a word called sacrifice. It means that even though I'm hungry and you want my last piece of chicken and I don't want to give it to you, but you ask me for it, I will sacrifice and give it to you. No, I know what you wanted. You wanted God to put you on. You wanted God to make your name great. You wanted God to make you famous. You wanted God to make you popular. You wanted God to make you extraordinary. You wanted the God to make everybody tweet about you. You wanted to be a power couple. What if God makes you a power single? Can you be happy with the life God chose for you, even if you didn't choose it for yourself? Can you be satisfied and say, Lord, I don't know why you're not doing what I want, but I'm going to trust that your plan is greater than my plan and your ways are higher than my ways and your thoughts are greater I feel this and your thoughts are greater than my thoughts and God even if I don't understand my answer is just going to be yes and amen yes doesn't mean I always agree but it means I understand there are some things I'm not going to understand on this side I'm going to have to wait and cross over and understand I'm going to have to cross on the other side and realize there are some things Some things. <laughs> Can you still have excitement of Hosanna when he doesn't match your expectation and just hangs there? It's easy, y'all churchy folk. Easy to praise him when things go the way you want. It's easy to shout when things do what you want them to do. It's easy to give God glory when you got a stimulus check. It's easy to give God glory when you got a stimulus check and you got dependence. It's easy to give God glory when things are working in your favor. But it's another thing. It's another level of maturity. It's another level of Christianity to be, uh, this is the part of Christianity that I'm scared of. I don't think we have enough Christians that are determined to follow God even when God is not following their plans. I don't know if we have Christians that are willing to follow God and when God isn't agreeing with their desire and when God isn't amening what they want. I had seasons in my life where I wanted God to amen some things and he didn't amen them and I felt a little salty about it. I felt a little sideways about it but at the end of the day the question has to be posed. Can you still honor God even even when God doesn't honor your request? Can you still honor God and lay down your palm branches when God doesn't say yes to your will, yes to your desires? What if God lets you be embarrassed for a season? Are you able to still trust that God's ways are greater than yours? That God's thoughts are higher than yours? Are you? Maybe hell is happening in your life because God wants a pure worship from your soul, a pure love from your heart. Maybe it's not going the way you want it to go because you haven't put him first. And maybe all this crap is happening because he wants to be first in your life, not second in your life, not third in your life. Oh, come on, church. You know how we do when God starts blessing you, PDSJ. All of a sudden, God starts becoming second. All of a sudden, your prayer time decreases your energy for him loses its seal but maybe God turns up heat in your life so that you can get back to the place where you recognize for God I live 
love and for God I die. Maybe you lost people that you love so that you can realize who really matters in your life. Everyone can walk away. Everyone can step aside as long as I don't lose the God that I serve. I have more than enough. If I lose everything but I don't lose him, I will get everything back that I lost. Everything the devil stole, I will receive a hundredfold. But if I have faith to believe that not everything I'll understand on this side. I gotta learn how to hang in there. It's a season, y'all. It's called hang in there. You lost your child, hang in there. It don't feel good, but hang in there. Marriage acting funny, it's okay. Hang in there. Single too long, hang in there. Ain't making as much money as you thought you should, hang in there. Not doing what you wanted to do, hang in there. It's part of being a Christian. You gotta learn how to hang sometimes. 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 What you working on my hang time? Before there was an MJ, there was a hang time. Before there was a LeBron, there was a hang time. Before there was a Dominique Wilkins, there was a hang time. You gotta learn how to hang. Hang in there. 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 God won't always meet the version you want. He won't always be what you thought he would be. That's when you got to learn how to hang in there. It's not always going to line up the way you wanted it. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. That doesn't mean you don't feel like throwing in the towel. That don't mean you don't feel like, hey, listen, baby, let me help you. I'm going home to go pick up these orders. But let me teach you what to do when life gets overwhelming. I've been leading a little bit long now in life. I know how to do this well. I've been doing this quite a bit, so I kind of got an understanding of how to do it. But you got to sometimes get to a place where life gets so overwhelming. And sometimes your faith gets challenged in the midst of it. But you got to learn how to say, you know what? I'm done with this. You got to be honest and say, I'm tired of this. You got to be real and say, Lord, I'm just sick of it. Lord, I just can't stand it. And you got to throw in your towel. And yes, I said it. I said it. I know I said it. I know it. Put it on the shade room. I said, you got to throw in your towel on God. You got to sometimes get to a place where you can't hang in there anymore. But after a while, you got to come to yourself. And you got to realize, I can't let that towel stay down too long. Because if I let that towel stay down too long, I'm going to lose my mind. If I let that towel hang in there too long, I'm going to walk away from all the things that I know. I got too much proof that you love me. I got too much evidence to prove that you're for me. I got too much evidence to prove that you will never leave me nor forsake me. And even though I threw in the towel, you're not offended by it, God. You understand that I'm human. I'm going to pick up my towel. And you might see me worshiping with a towel. You might see me worshiping and say, didn't you throw in the towel? Didn't you backslide? Yeah, baby, I did. But then I front slid because I realized where my help comes from. I realized where my peace comes from. I realized where my joy comes from. I realized there is no life without him. It is in him that I move and have my being. I realized that if you allowed me to survive it, you allowed me to go through it, then I'm standing for a reason. And even if you don't match my expectation, you're still God. You're still God. You're still God. It don't matter if it don't go the way I want it. You're still God. Even if it doesn't go the way I hope, you're still God. You are my father and I trust you. You are my daddy and I trust you. I know that 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 I know.
Hang in there. Hang in there, y'all. Hang in there. Come on, can you worship him even in your home? that comes from your heart. You've been, listen, you deserve to worship. You've been through enough hell this year. You got a reason to. You've been through enough stuff in a short space. You got enough reason to scream. You, you got a reason to cry. You got, you got absolutely every reason to say hallelujah. You got every reason to say thank you, Jesus. You got every, all the stuff you've been through, all the stuff that you lost, all the stuff that you've given up this year, all the things that you had to lay down, you got a reason, baby. You got, don't let these chairs hold you captive. Don't let these masks hold you captive. Break free from the chains and say, God, I just need to tell you that I trust you, that I thank you, that I praise you. I haven't done it always. I haven't been the best at it, but today I want to tell you I thank you. I praise you, I honor you, I magnify you, I install you, I give your name. Hang in there. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on. Listen, don't look at me. I can't help you. If I could help you, I would. I can't help you. I got the same struggles you got. I got the same storms you got. I got the same seasons you got. You got to learn how to get it for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. You got to learn how to go for yourself. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Ah, hanging hurts, hanging hurts, hanging hurts. It does hurt, it does hurt, but hang in there. It does hurt, but hang in there. tell you this, and you can mark this day, March 28th, the atmosphere is unsettled. And I think what we came out of was bad, but I believe there's still yet more riots in our streets. There's still yet more casualty that we'll see. And this message is your anchor that you cannot let what you see on this side stop you from seeing what you know is going to be on the other side. I woke up at 3 in the morning and the words that I heard was the atmosphere is unsettled. The accounts have not still yet been reconciled. There's still yet more to come. And this is not a message or a word and you can mark the date when you start seeing these things burning in cities and I know they may block you or censor you for saying that on this platform but the reality is this that I don't want you to be moved by what you see I want you to know that God is still counting his chips 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 that God is reconciling things that God is reconciling things and you who are in this sanctuary or, or watching that are online, I want you to take a few moments of time. I know they tell you this and it feels like Simon says, but this is a moment that God created just for 
you in mind. I want you to lift your hands, even if you don't know what you're lifting them for. I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to tell God what you feel right now. You ain't told nobody, and maybe you have told somebody, but you need to take this moment. This is your moment. This ain't pastor's moment. This ain't the worship team's moment. This is your moment. I need you to tell your father, you watching in the camera, you need to tell your father exactly where you are. I know hanging hurts, but hang in there. I know it don't feel good, but hang in there. Hang in there. Hang. I know it's been a long night, and I know you want to get to the joy that comes in the morning, but hang in your night season. Let there be a sound. We're going home, y'all. Let there be a sound that just comes from your lips. This is your church, God. We are your people. So do in this place what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Yes. 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 That's what you call the glory of God. It was 12 a.m. God said, change your message. I begin to write because God wanted you to know to hang in there. Some things you're not going to understand on this side, you got to be able to concretize your soul and say, I'm going to understand it on the other side. Tears in my eyes, I don't understand it. I've sat with people who lost babies and they were trying to have children and they were sobbing and I cried with them and they didn't understand why God would allow this to happen. And now they're holding children in their arms. It doesn't replace what they lost. Don't minimize what I'm saying. But there is a joy that comes on the other side. There is a joy that comes on the other side. There is a joy that, come on God, there is a joy that comes on the other side. There is a joy and some of you lost loved ones and you cried and you cried cried and you cried and you cried and some of you will lose ones ones you will lose the loved ones that you have and you will cry and it will hurt and it will be painful if you're like me you got aging parents and you know any day any moment you could get a call that it's done that your final days are now gone and they're departed and you'll feel sad and you'll want them around you want them to pray you through you want them to intercede for you but you gotta understand there are some things we're not gonna understand on this side you just gotta hang in there you just gotta hang in there that doesn't mean you ignore the realities of life but God is sovereign he doesn't owe me an explanation even though I want an explanation even though I want an answer even though I want to know why but God I've got to learn how to say Lord if you made me if you created me if you formed me if you shaped me then I've got to trust you. I've got to know that you know what you're doing, even when it involves my life. I may have not signed up for it. I may have not agreed to it. And they may be slandering your name right now. And you want to say something. And you want to defend yourself. Your name is in the hands of God. God can do more with your name than you can do for yourself. And some of you want to quit on your calling because it's getting hard. It's getting tough. It's getting heavy. But God God doesn't call us to do what we love. That's why he called us. So that every time you throw in the towel, you realize I didn't call myself. God called me. 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 And you need to know that. So we give you praise. I ain't got no money in my account. You still owe him. You still owe him to worship. I'm behind on my bills. You still owe it to him. Just had surgery and my body hurts. You still owe it to him. 
don't feel like coming to church, but you still owe it to them. Been watching at home because you don't want to get out your house, you still owe it to them. Been done with church, and some of you are so now at the point where you're a part of a generation that says, I'm done with church. I ain't got nothing to do with church no more. I don't want to deal with church. I'm tired of church people. Baby, I'm tired of church people too, but I know God didn't call me by myself. I answered his call, and I know God is tied with me too. I know he's frustrated with me too, so you got to learn how to hang in there. You got to learn how to hang in there. You got to learn how to hang in there. You got to learn how to hang in there. They didn't call you. God called you. They didn't call you. God called you. They didn't call you. God called you. Oh, you got to get out of this cancel culture because God could have canceled us a long time ago, but he kept killing us. He kept calling us. He kept calling. Even though I hung up the phone on him, even though I sent him the voicemail, even though I declined his call, he still keeps calling. And you want to get your life together, you need to get back into the place that you started from. Get back into the place. Your marriage went astray because your soul went astray. Your marriage went astray because your soul went astray. Your joy went astray because your soul went astray. Today, come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back, backslider. Come back, wayward child. Come back, worshiper that stopped worshiping. Come back, praiser that stopped praising. Come back to God. Come back to God. I know it was a misunderstanding. Come back to God. You who are in this sanctuary and you feel God calling you, I want you to come to this altar. This ain't a stage, it's an altar. I want you to come to this altar. If you're in this place and you're feeling God pulling you and you don't know what it is, I want you to come to the altar. I know we got to give, but I want you to come to the altar. I want you to come to the altar. I want you to come to the altar. Come on, worshiper. Come to the altar. Come on, praiser. Come to the altar. You've been carrying it too long. Come to the altar. Come where my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Let's go back to the way the church was a church where it wasn't a stage. It was an altar where I laid down my life. Where it's where I said yes to God. It's where I said, God, have your way. It's where I said, God, do what you want to do in my life, in my soul. I'm coming to the altar where my life can be altered. We come to this altar. brother I want to show you how much I'm concerned about you I, in my mind I gotta we gotta raise a giving and I know it and I'm losing time but there's some brothers that are in here you're thinking too much you're processing it too much God's calling you to come to his altar don't let women be the only one that come to the altar there are, mother, there are men that need to be at this altar I'm gonna wait on you my brother I'm gonna wait on you my brother I'm gonna wait on you, my brother. 10 seconds, there's some brothers that need to be at the altar. There's some brothers that need some things altered for them. Hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. Come on, my dear brother, don't think about it, come on. We're praising God with you as you come. Yes, sir, we're praising God as you come. My man of God, thank you. Thank you, man of God, I feel you. I felt you in your service. Come on, even if you're in the balcony, you gotta come on down, come on down. I'm gonna wait on you. Come on, man of God, come on, man of God, come on, man of God. You are not weak because you come to an altar. You are not weak because you come to it. You're strong because you come to an altar. Come on, man of God, come on down. Come on down from the balcony, yeah, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down. Come on down, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on down, come on down. Come on down, come on down. Don't carry that burden by yourself. Don't carry that burden by yourself. Don't don't carry it by yourself. Hennessy can't do it for you. Don't carry it by yourself. 
yourself. Don't, don't carry it by yourself. Come on, man of God. I'm going to wait for you. I'm your brother. I'm going to wait for you. I'm not better than you. I'm your brother. I'm going to wait for you. Come on, man of God. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. God's been waiting for you. Come on, man of God. Come on. I know you got to come down away. I know it's against your ego. I know it's against what you're accustomed to. But come on, if you sense him pulling you, if you sense him drawing you, come on, come on, come on. Your money can't fix this. Your joy can't fix this. Your happiness can't fix this. Come on, man of God. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. This is an altar. Here's the word of the Lord. This is an altar. Stop making it a stage. It's an altar. Let people come to the altar. Let them come whatever campus you're at, whether you're at Kissimmee, whether you're at Korea, let them come to the altar. This is the altar of God. This is not where we perform. This is the altar of God. It may be old-fashioned. It may not be popular, but this is the wind of the Father. Father, these are your children. They don't belong to me. They are stewarded by me, but they belong to you. We're seeing sons at this altar because they face weight that we don't know how to articulate. Holy Spirit, please, please, please touch your children. while they hang in there. Give them another breath to hang. Give them a second wind. Give them a second too heavy help us to hang in there life is so complex help us to hang in there the weight people are carrying is crazy. God, help them to hang in there. Father, help us to hang in there. Help my brother to pass this bar exam. Help these men to figure out how to even be men. women how to be women with the challenges that come with that alone. Sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Help these parents who are afraid to raise their children. Who are scared when they come out and go home. It's a real fear.
Church, let me just tell you, when you're singing that, that don't always mean everything is good. That don't mean everything is perfect, but you just still got to give it to them. That don't mean I understand everything, but I still say. I just, come on church, come on, you got it, sing softly, come on, say thank you. The entire church singing it, even if you don't understand, say. Come on and thank him, thank him. been so good You've been so good Come on you've been you've been you've been so good Listen, you may not be able to see children or young youth at this altar. It takes a lot. I pray with you that you will be encouraged to hang in there. There's so many people counting on you hanging. You won't even feel like getting out the bed. But hang in there. The secret of Christianity is this. Joy and pain live in the same house. You've got to learn how to deal with both joy sorry you weren't taught this version of Christianity but you gotta learn how to live in joy and pain so
So, Father, we've given you ears of our worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. Father, thank you for this, what we've given you. Thank you for what you've given us. Give us another win to hang in there. Hmm. It's obvious that there's something you want to convey to this church this morning. Help us to hang in there when we don't understand. My brother, Maroon Shirt. Cost to be a black man. Hang in there. Am I lied to you? Come on, hang in there. Take joy. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile. This is the last time. One more time. Here's my worship. Take joy. Make it your dwelling. One more time. Here's my worship. Come on, take joy. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile. Josh, I want to put a smile, I present, come on sing it Josh, sing it one more time for a minister in the making, no matter what your season is, here's my, that's your calling, Fight back the warfare. Take your prayer life back. Take your home back. Listen, I want to conclude by saying this. Some of you, God has called you to get back into doing what you're called to do. 
Denise, you're supposed to be on the intercessory team. And I'm telling you what God said. Making God smile is not about what you want to do. It's about submitting your gifts to what he wants you to do. Oh, I can hear God. Yeah. receive that, would you clap your hands like you receive it? Woo. Woo. Come on, put your hands together like you receive it.